Back in on Riders Block, I'm Eric Casilia sitting in for Bill. And if you're an NBA player, things are pretty good right now. If you're Bismarck Biombo, things are really good right now. He's in Charlotte, doing well, playing really well for his team. And it's All-Star Weekend in the city where he plays. So we say hello and welcome. How are you? Thanks for being uh, with us today and giving us a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm wonderful. As you said, the whole star is here. We're all excited. The team is doing great. I'm doing great. So can't complain. Thank you for having me. All right. So if you and I were the captains instead of Giannis and LeBron and you had the first pick, who would you have taken? Uh, I would have taken Campbell Walker uh, just because <laughs> he made it. He's my brother <laughs> and we all send the whole star. So, yeah, I would have taken Campbell Walker. All right. If you couldn't take a current teammate, who would you have taken? Yeah. Uh, I would have taken Kyle Lowry. <laughs> He's still my one of my best friends. Uh, uh, obviously, LeBron would be among other guys that I would love to have on my team. <laughs> now, we know the big names, right? LeBron, Kevin Durant, Giannis. You mentioned yeah. Kyle Lowry, Kemba Walker. Who's the guy, whether he's an all-star or not, that's mm -hmm. better than he gets credit for. A guy that when you show up at the arena, like, man, this is not going to be fun, but he doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, I'll probably say right now, Pascal Siakam, as, as I had a chance to spend a lot more time with him in South Africa and wor uh, work with him uh, in, uh, in L.A. Uh, obviously, the team is doing good. All the attention is around Kawhi, but I think it's, is actually bring more to the table than the credit has been given to him. Uh, obviously, his numbers are showing. Um, I just hope he continue like that, so eventually he can at least get the, the most improved player of the year. You know, it's funny. It's not the first time I've asked somebody that question, and it's not the first time somebody has given me that name and that player uh, in response. You mentioned South Africa. You're a kid right. from the Congo, and it's an interesting story. It's yeah. 16. Your parents want you to go to college, and you say, just give me a year. Just give me a year <laughs> to see if I can make this basketball thing work out. I mean, you're making $17 million this year, so, I mean, I, you can leave it whether you made the right <laughs> choice or not. But uh, how did that know, play out? So, uh, I mean, at the beginning as a kid, you know, you face this challenge in, in your head, and you're like, you know, I, I can't fail. Like, th this is my only way out. And, and if I ever want to live my dreams, I really got to prove that, you know this dream of mine is actually, you know, worth something. So, like, going for it, I had to show some progress along the way. But for me, it was also about taking a challenge. I've, I've done that my whole life, taking a challenge, enjoying the challenge in the process. And obviously, I've had great parents that have given me a chance and opportunity to get out there and, and you know, live like a kid, you know, with a dream and, and, and along the way, helping my dreams become reality. I love the diverse perspective that different people bring to any problem or organization yes. or situation. Mm -hmm. This for me is encapsulated when someone asked you if you were afraid of LeBron James. You said, I'm not afraid of LeBron James. I'm afraid of a lion. Have you ever <laughs> come face to face with a lion? And, and tell me what that would be like. So before I did a lion, I wanted to work my way up. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I went in the Congo, we have a beautiful park, uh, the, the Virunga Park. Uh, I went there to see uh, the gorilla, the wild gorilla. And uh, and it was in the wild. I was sitting literally probably like uh, a feet next to a gorilla. And um, and it was a silver badge. And and at first I was afraid. And then once you spend a little time, you get used to, you know, you feel good. And then last year I was like, you know, I've, you know, when we were in the playoff, uh, you know, was this thing about I'm not afraid of a lion, which is uh, of a human being afraid of a lion, which was true. And I have to see one face to face and see how it feels like. So I was in South Africa and I had a chance to actually uh, spend probably a few hours uh, with the, the wild lion. And uh, obviously I was in the car, was not outside. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's just the way they look at you. The highs are so firm. And, uh, and and I think, to me, that's the scary part. And then I asked the guy, you know, if they would have taken a baby lion and put him, and put him in, uh, in, um, in a zoo, would he still have the ability to kill somebody? He said, yeah, they're born killer. They're born killer. You can put them in a while. They will know where to attack a human being. I was like, well, 
respect. That makes sense. There you go. So that's why you're afraid of it. And it's, we're always talking about, you know, like intimidation and presence with LeBron James yeah. and you say the line. The guy mm -hmm. who owns the team that you're on had a little bit of a presence and some intimidation. Michael Jordan, who will have his 56th birthday this weekend, an all-star weekend. You know, you essentially work for him. He's the owner of the team. Yeah. When you've met him and talked to him, what's that been like? Uh, and how did you feel with in the presence of talking to MJ? Oh, man, he has been great, you know. Uh, we're going to celebrate tomorrow for sure. No, tonight is the party. We're all going to be there. <laughs> but uh, he has been great. Uh, I think to me he has been more than a mentor. Because uh, um, when I came in as a rookie, I was trying to find out and figure out, you know, how this NBA life was going to be for me. Because I go from obviously now making money to making money, but also have responsibility. And... Uh, and to him was about the work ethic, which was which I think was very important, and uh, and the lesson about an, an NBA game. So along the way, like I had to rely on him a lot, especially early in my my first few few years in the league. And then obviously as you grow, the lesson you have learned early kind of start helping you, and then you know you get detached a little bit, you're trying to fly on your own. So he's giving you advice and you're going to his birthday party tonight. What the heck do you get Michael Jordan as a birthday present? Uh, nothing, <laughs> just, a, just a hug. Good, that's probably all he needs. That's exactly <laughs> just right. Just a hug and wish you all the best. I, I don't think there's anything I can get him uh, that will uh, replace all these things you already had and all these things you can afford. Uh, so a hug and a handshake and and probably a couple shots of tequila. I was, we love tequila. And yeah. Love all. <laughs> all right. I'm in. I, I, you know, just make me your plus one. I'll be there. That'll be, that'll be terrific. Look, there's a lot of good things right now about being an NBA player. And we've talked about that. What is the best thing about today's NBA player and being an NBA player? And what's the worst thing about being an NBA player in 2019? Oh, uh, the best thing about being an NBA player is that we expose to, uh, a lot of things that we never thought we will be exposed to um, financially uh, and uh, and all uh, all kind of levels. But at the same time, uh, I, th I think the worst thing uh, about being an NBA player right now, we, we lose the value of a lot of things uh, because now um, the, the salary that we make in one year, uh, guys back in the day would work the whole career to make that salary. So therefore, you know, we've, uh, a lot of us, uh, I include myself in them because we all represent one brand. Uh, a lot of us lose uh, sight of things, you know, appreciation of the little things. And I think that's one of the worst things nowadays about being an NBA player, you know. We even forget how to say thank you to certain people, you know. Uh, that's when I sit back, those are the little things I get to pay attention to. And then I think nowadays that would be the, one of the worst things. Well said. You're here. All right. Last one. Second half. Charlotte Hornets. What's the goal? What's the best case scenario for this team this year? Uh, the best case scenario is to get to the playoff. Um, and then from there, we can figure out the rest. Obviously, we all know the recipe of the playoff. No matter if we're facing number one or number two, number three, we just got to get to the playoff. And we have to. And we're going to. Well, with your ability to rebound and play defense and Kemba Walker and all the other great players on the team, I'm sure nobody's betting against you. Thank you so much for a few minutes. Really a pleasure to talk to you. It was really a joy. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys.